students, I am Dr. Anita Singh. I welcome to the second session of chapter Living World, first chapter of class 11 Biology. Before moving forward, let us recall what we learned in the previous session. We learned the meaning of the word biology, that is, biology is the branch of science that deals with the study of life forms. Meaning of word living, the defining features of living organism. You are able to remember that metabolism, consciousness and cellular organizations are the defining features of the living organism. The importance of biodiversity and it is our duty as a citizen of our nation to conserve, restore and promote the sustainable use of biodiversity. We also saw how biological classification is done. What are the system of biological classification? We learnt about binomial nomenclature, trinomial nomenclature and we also learn the various rules, the universal rules of biological nomenclature. Let us begin with today's topic. Today's learning objectives are that you will think critically and understand the need and importance of biological classification. You will critically assess the concept of species and develop understanding towards various exceptions. You will identify various taxonomic categories and relate them with examples. You will also be able to relate your subject with your daily life. Let us begin with the topic. Biological classification. Classification or categorization is a phenomena that you must have observed in your daily life also. Try to recall the arrangement done by your mother in the kitchen. She has meticulously arranged various items in various categories as per her need. Utensils are kept in a different place, eatables are at different place. You may see various cupboards filled with dals, biscuits etc. She keeps at some other place. Okay. So, categorization uh, you must have also observed in your library school library, books are properly arranged. Let me explain this uh, classification concept with an example. Suppose you stabbed in a room that is filled with um, 1000 books and if I ask you to take out class 11th NCRT biology textbook, will you be able to do it? I do not think so. For that, you need to identify all the books arrange them or categorize them depending upon various aspects. You may consider the standard of the book or whether it is a textbook, it is a reference book or is it a sample paper. You will categorize things based on similarities and dissimilarities and then you can keep these books in different racks. Then if I ask you to take out a particular book, you can easily take it out. Secondly, Another benefit of the categorization is, suppose I give you a book to keep it in a rack, then what will you do? You will compare the aspect of that book like the language you can compare, the subject you can compare, you can compare uh, the standard of that book, that book belongs to which class and then you can find the similarity in that particular room or in racks and then you can keep that book in that particular rack. So, uh, categorization is basically or the biological classification is scientific procedure of arranging organism into groups and subgroups. Similarly, with the example that I have explained you where you have arranged books into various uh, racks. So, biological classification organisms are arranged on the basis of the similarities and dissimilarities. Let us discuss the importance of biological classification. When you do the classification, it facilitates the easy identification of organism. You can easily identify, you can easily relate to which organism you are talking about. Classification also helps to establish the relationship amongst various groups of organisms. Classification also helps in understanding the phylogenetic relationship. Yeah, it means the evolutionary relationship between various 
organisms. Let us discuss a question. Why our biological classification system keeps changing every now and then? If you look at the history of biological classification, it goes back to the Aristotle. Aristotle is also known as the father of biological classification. He was the first person on the earth who felt the need of such classification while studying animal kingdom. He classified various animals on the basis of their habitat, whether they lived on land, water or in air. After Aristotle, many more scientists have worked on the classification system and as the time has uh, passed, many type of biological classification system has co uh, come to existence. For example, two kingdom classification, five kingdom classification, uh, three domains of life all these type of classification you will learn in next chapter. That is coming back to discussion. Why biological classification system needs the change? In the previous class, we studied about the biodiversity, how uh, our world is full of variety of living organisms and out of which millions of the plants, animals and microorganisms that are found on earth have been identified, they have been given proper biological names. But still, there are new species that are being discovered to the world, new characteristics of these species have been, are been found. So, to classify these newly discovered species with new characteristics the system needs a change, the system needs to be updated regularly to incorporate this new group of organisms. Let us discuss various branches of biology that deals with the classification. The first branch of biology known as taxonomy, this is the branch that deals with identification, nomenclature and also with the classification of living organism. The term taxonomy was given by De Candolle. When taxonomy is dealing with the identification, nomenclature and classification, it takes account many features like external uh, structures, internal uh, anatomy of an organism, cellular structure, its relationship with various other organisms. Go to the next branch of biology systematics. This is made up of two words, systema that means orderly arrangement and the term was given by Linnaeus in his book, Systema Naturae was the title of his book or publication. If we compare taxonomy with systematics, then we can say taxonomy if we will add evolutionary relationship along with the taxonomy that is systematics. Let us begin with the taxonomic categories. Taxonomic categories are actually sequential arrangement of various taxons. What are taxons? Taxons refers to a category or rank. Let us understand this with an example. Suppose there are 35 students in a section. Let us consider this section as a, it is a A section. We are keeping 35 students in a section. All these students are different, they are different individuals, but still they are kept in a particular section. Why? Because all of these students are, uh, must be studying particular uh, common subjects. For example, let us consider this is a biology group, all students must be studying chemistry, physics, biology, etc. A particular set of teachers uh, would be teaching these students. So, they have some similarities. Along with that, all these students are different individuals also, fine. Let us consider there are four sections, section B, section C, section D in a particular class. All these sections are kept in a particular class. Let us say this is a 11th class, okay. So, all these sections are there in class 11th, 
but these sections are different. The students inside the sections are also different. These sections will also share some common things. What could they have been? Students of these sections uh, have passed class 10th result. They must have uh, secured a particular uh, percentage to get the admission. Um, along with that, they will be studying different subjects too. Okay. So, there is some similarity as well as some dissimilarity. Like I mentioned that these sections are there in class 11. There will be 12 classes there in that school, class 1, 2, 3, 4. Similarly, it will go on up to the class 12 and all these classes are there in a school. Okay. So, what is common in these classes that they all student uh, are coming to the school for study, they are wearing similar uniform. So, there is again a similarity as well as there are dissimilarities. So, with this example, you can understand how the hierarchy in the school works. Okay. This is the largest group and this will be the smallest group. Similarly, when you are studying uh, enormous variety of organism, you need to devise a convenient way to study them. This is why the living organism are arranged into various categories based on uh, their similarities, dissimilarities and each category is called as taxon. Okay. So, the term or uh, for the category is taxon. Taxon also represent a rank. Let us understand various taxonomic categories. There are seven taxonomic categories starting from kingdom, which is the largest and most diverse group. Then phylum, class, order, family, genus and species. Species is the smallest and least diverse group. You can compare kingdom with your school in the example I had given and species you can compare with the students of a particular section and you will understand the school was a most diverse group and if you look at the student, it was the least diverse group. Let us understand the concept of species first. The term was given by John Ray and the concept was given by Ernst Mayer, he is also called as Darwin of 20th century. Mayer was awarded three prizes and uh, they are widely regarded as triple crown of biology, the Belgian prize in 1983, the international prize for biology in 1994. Biological concept given by Ernest Mayer says that species is a group of organism that are closely related they can interbreed among themselves and they produce fertile offsprings. There are enormous number of species, enormous types of species. Let us take few example, Panthera tigris, Mangifera indica, Musca domestica. Let us explore what he was trying to say in his concept. He talked about that species is a group of closely related individual. What is the meaning of closely related? That they all have common ancestor. They were sharing the same or similar gene, gene pool. And these organisms were able to interbreed among themselves and the offsprings they were producing must, were, must be fertile. But here are few exceptions too. You might have heard the name of Tigon. Liger, usually tiger is a different species, lion is a different one. Ideally, they should not reproduce with each other. They are different species according to the concept given by Anas Mayer. They are not very closely related, okay. they are separate species. But if you keep these animals in captivity, they are able to interbreed with each other. Tiger is a hybrid that is produced when Tiger is crossed with lioness and liger is produced when lion is crossed with tigress. An important thing is to note that they are different uh, animals, they are interbreeding among themselves, they are 
uh, producing progeny that has capability of self breeding. These trigon or liger the females are able to reproduce. So, the cons these are exception to the concept given by Anas Meyer. Another example of the exception is mule. You all are familiar with the mule? How is mule, mule is produced? Male donkey crosses with female horse, mule is produced. Hine is produced when male horse crosses with female donkey. They are also hybrid, but they are non-fertile, they cannot reproduce, fine. So, it happens in nature that few uh, organism which are not related to the same species, they are able to reproduce and when they produce progeny at times it is fertile. In maximum number of cases the progeny produces not fertile. Let us explore various other taxonomic categories. One of the taxonomic category is genus. Genus is a category that contains similar species. For example, Panthera is a genus that contains species which includes lion, leopard, jaguar, snow leopard and tiger. The scientific name of lion is Panthera leo, Panthera pardus is the scientific name of leopard, Panthera onca for jaguar, Panthera Unixia for snow leopard and Panthera tigris is the scientific name of tiger. All are different species and they are similar, they are wild cat, so they are placed in a genus named as Panthera, right. Let us take an example from the plants. Genus Solanum contains tomatoes, potatoes and eggplants. All are different species have common characters, so they are placed in a genus known as Solanum. Go to the next category, taxonomic category that is family. Family is the category that contains various genus. For example, family Phalidae contains Phallis and Panthera. Panthera are wild cats and Phallis contains, Phallis is a family that contains small cats. Solanaceae is the plant family that contains genus Solanum, Petunia and the Tura. Next taxonomic category, order. Order contains families that share some common morphological characters. For example, order Carnivora contains two families, Canidae which is known as dog family and Phalidae which is known as cat family. Moving towards the next taxonomy category, class. Class is a category, you will say rank, you can say taxon, it contains similar orders. For example, class Mammalia contains order Carnivora and Primata. There are more orders also included in this Mammalia. Let us move to the next category that is Phylum. Phylum is a category that contains similar classes. In case of plants, we use the term division instead of phylum. An example of the phylum, we can take Chordata. Chordata is a phylum that contains various classes which includes Mammalia, Reptiles, Amphibia, Apes and Pisces. You must be familiar with these all classes, you must have studied them in your class, lower classes. Let us now discuss the most diverse group kingdom. It is the category that contains all phylums, all phy like kingdom Animalia, it contains all the phylum like Chordata, Mollusca, Arthropoda, Echinodermata, Protochordata, Hemichordata and many more. Let us take few examples. We will uh, discuss about their common name, how they are classified, we will discuss about various categories, taxonomic categories of these animals. Let us take few examples and understand different taxonomic categories to which they belong. First example we will take is of men. The biological name of the men is Homo sapien. 
He belongs to the genus Homo, family Homonidae, order Primata, class Mammalia, phylum Chordata. Moving to the next example, housefly. The biological name of the housefly is Musca domestica, genus Musca, family is Muscidae, order Diptera, class Insecta, phylum Arthropoda. Moving to the next example taken from the plants, mango is the common name. Biological name of the mango is Mangifera indica. It belongs to the genus Mangifera, family Encardiaceae, order is Sapindales. It belongs to the class Dicotyledonae, phylum Angiospermae. Another example from the plant we have taken today is of wheat. The biological name of wheat is Triticum estiva. Genus is Triticum. It belongs to the family Poaceae. Order is Poales. Class is Monocotyledonae. And it belongs to the division Angiospermae. Let us have a quick recap of the session. Today we discussed and understood the need and importance of biological classification. We also explained the taxonomy and systematics to branches of biology. We also tried to understand the species concept and develop understanding for the exceptions. We also learnt various taxonomic categories. We also understood these taxonomic categories with the help of various examples. That was all for today's session. In the next session, you will learn about various taxonomical aids, how they are used uh, in identification of various plants and animals. Thank you.